So let's demonstrate Service Fabric by creating a cluster. I'm going to use the Azure Cloud Shell and CLI for this. So I clicked on the Cloud Shell button in the top middle of the menu, and it starts up a terminal for me. I'm going to maximize the screen here. And I'm running in the CLI environment bash. Now, if I do a DIR, I can see that I do have a local storage here within this environment. That was a storage account that we created when we first created our um, Cloud Shell. I'm going to make a new directory just for this. I'm going to call it uh, Service Fabric. And then we can CD into that. So we're going to start off by creating a resource group as we usually do. AZ group create. Remember, it is AZ followed by the service followed by a verb. And we're going to give this resource group a name, AZSJD Service Fabric Group, and a location. And that location, I will put it in Yeast US. So, comes back, succeeded with the new resource group. I'm going to clear, clear the screen by typing clear. Now, now we're going to create our service fabric cluster. Now, there's, this is a little bit complex, but this, um, the script for this is going to be uh, attached to this lecture. So if you want to download the code for this, go to the resources and download that. So you're going to start off with the AZ, and I'm going to say SF, which is the service fabric. But there is a subservice called cluster. So this is AZ SF cluster create. That is the command that we need to create a service fabric cluster. But what we're going to do is we're going to pass in all of the properties and parameters that we need. The resource group, it gets a name like AZ SJD SF group that we previously created. And the location for this cluster is going to be East US. We'll keep it in the same location. Now we are going to need a security certificates and we're going to store those security certificates in the vault. Okay. So we're going to have to create a resource vault, create certificate security certificates. Let's uh, certificate. Now, if I hit the tab key, it should autofill in a second here. Certificate outfit folder, which since we are in the directory that we want to be in, I'm just going to say dot, which is the current directory. We have to give it a password. So certificate P. And I'm going to give it a password, realizing that you all are looking at this. So this is not going to live for very long. And then we have to give the certificate what's called a subject name. So the subject lane, the domain name here has to match the domain name of our cluster, of our service fabric cluster, which we haven't created yet. So I, I kind of want to know in advance that I'm going to call this AZSJD service fabric. Uh, hopefully nobody has taken that. Otherwise, I will be having to edit this. It will fail and I'll have to edit it. So that's the certificates domain name that's going to be embedded in the certificate. We want to give the cluster a name. So the service fabric cluster has to match this domain that we just created, that we just identified. And how many nodes do we want? In this case, I'm only going to have a two node cluster, but you can have five or more. What operating system? So I'm going to have Ubuntu server 16.04. Now we said the certificate's going to live in a uh, in a Azure Key Vault, so we have to give the the vault a name. So this is at AZ SF New Vault, and the vault is going to go into a resource group as they are required to. We're going to put this in the same resource group. The purpose of putting stuff in the same resource group is so it makes it easy to delete after, keeps it all together. We're almost done. So here we are. We've taken Service Fabric Cluster Create. We've, we've indicated the location, the resource group and the location. 
we set up the certificate. We are setting up the cluster name, the size, the operating system. We're setting up the key vault, which is going to store the certificate. Uh, the final thing we need to do is set up a virtual machine specific stuff such as password and username. And so I have yet another uh, password that I'm going to have to come up with. And I also have to give it a username. So if I say VM hyphen user hyphen name, AZ SJD test user, that'll be my username. So this command together, it's a bit long, but each of the properties is required in order to create the group. Uh, it's not to create the group, but to create the service fabric cluster, certificate, the key vault, and all of the properties required. So I'm going to hit enter. Now this is going to take a while. Obviously we're creating a lot of things here, but um, one of the downsides of CLI is we can't really see the percentage. It's not outputting any sort of verboseness here, but what we can do is we can go, you know, pull this down, go into our resource groups here. Now we know that we created a, a resource group that has uh, SF in it. And in my case, you're going to have a different one. So I'm able to find that group. And when I go into it, it's already got 13 items in it. So we can see a virtual network, multiple storage accounts, the IP address, VM scale set, even a load balancer, service fabric cluster, and a key vault. There's also another way to see this deployment running. Um, we don't have, you know, in the portal, we have this notification process, but Within a resource group, we can see the deployments underway. So there's a deployment setting or up here, it says one in the process of being deployed. And so for the resource group that we're creating, the uh, CLI has created its own ARM deployment. And now we can see the uh, deployment in action. We can see all the actions that it's taken. And we're currently in the virtual machine scale set step. Um, we can see that's still underway. We can see how long it's taken. If you ever want to check out the ARM template, check out uh, something like this, we can actually uh, later on dig in here and see how uh, the CLI commands got turned into, into ARM. So um, this is one way of monitoring your deployment if it's taking a long time, and it will take a long time.